I think the South African public would do very well to, to rally against this bill. The threat to private property rights continues in South Africa with the expropriation bill currently before Parliament. The bill is open to public comment and business group Sarkelicha is preparing a submission. I'm joined by legal fellow at Sarkelicha, Martin van Staden. Martin, what are Sarkelicha's key objections to the bill in its current form? We are very concerned about uh, many uh, things in the bill, but specifically in this context, government is trying to make it as easy and as simple as possible for itself to go from deciding to expropriate a piece of property and actually getting that property into its own hands, uh, even with, uh, before paying. So the bill creates the impression that uh, possession and ownership of the property will only pass to government once the uh, victim of the expropriation has been paid. But when you read it more holistically, you can see quite clearly that government is angling for a situation where even if you uh, challenge the expropriation in court, uh, government will still be able to take possession of the property before that uh, uh, case has been settled and the judgment has been reached. And in many cases, before you have even received a cent of compensation, uh, uh, government can uh, so-called delay payment. Okay, uh, so that's quite worrying because you could be uh, left without your property and penniless at the same time. So Martin, what about the issue of compensation itself? How does the bill set about determining how compensation is actually calculated? Well, we regard it quite important for there to be consensus between the uh, owner of the property and the government before any expropriation process starts on the amount of compensation. But unfortunately, the bill does not go there. It speaks of consensus and negotiation and agreement. But uh, the problem is that government can, if it rejects the owner's claim for compensation, make a so-called offer for compensation. Uh, which the owner, in fact, does not have a choice but to accept. Otherwise, government will simply proceed and seize the property for that amount in compensation. Uh, uh, and another point in the bill says that uh, the fact that your property is, in fact, being expropriated non non-consensually, as all expropriations are, that cannot be factored into the amount of compensation. Now, uh, I think the sense of justice and logic would tell you that uh, if your property is being taken uh, 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 being taken by government, then that fact alone should be a reason for a higher amount in compensation, just as a way for government to apologize, to say, we recognize that we're doing this to you. You are not blameworthy or uh, guilty of anything. So we apologize. And therefore, here is a, a generous amount in compensation. Government is not interested in going down that route. And that is very worrying. So Martin, I think it's very important for our viewers to understand that there are two separate processes here. So on the one hand, we have this expropriation bill, which we've been discussing. And then on the other hand is the constitutional amendment process, which is bubbling away in the background. So in terms of the constitution in its current form, would this piece of legislation, the expropriation bill, pass constitutional muster? So uh, our view is no, uh, it, it certainly won't. The constitution as it currently stands still makes uh, the payment of compensation uh, a constitutional requirement and amount in compensation. And of course, a provision in this bill does regulate expropriation without compensation, which is something that is does not exist in our law as things currently stand. So if government does want the, this ordinary legislation to be constitutional, it would need to amend the constitution first, which of course is a big, uh, big problem in, in and of itself. But that's not the extent of the problem with the expropriation without compensation provisions in this bill. Uh, I think as the Institute of Race Relations has also pointed out repeatedly, and I, I agree that this is probably the uh, most important uh, problem with EWC in the bill is the open list of circumstances. Uh, so this is the ordinary legal language there is to say that uh, the circumstances under which property may be expropriated without compensation includes but is not limited to X, Y, and Z. And that simply means that government can, uh, uh, in any circumstance, deem that situation to justify an expropriation without compensation, even though it is not spelled out in the legislation. Uh, and that creates extreme uncertainty. Uh, it doesn't matter whether the circumstances are in the law. It can just 
uh, befell you as a property owner out of the blue that your property is now being seized without compensation. And one of the, uh, the list itself, the open list, one of the items in that list is, is quite problematic. Uh, uh, this is not to say all of them aren't problematic, but this one in particular is problematic in that it says that property that has been abandoned uh, is liable to be expropriated without compensation. Now, if, if you're aware of common law, the common law says, yes, property that is abandoned can be taken because it's not owned anymore. But the way that the expropriation bill defines abandoned is quite bizarre. It says that if you as an owner fail to control or fail to possess the property, it will be deemed to be abandoned. And now an example of that is if you own a piece of land and you have every intention to continue owning that piece of land, but squatters or uh, uh, just criminals come onto your land and evict you from your own property, and now they live there, you are failing to exercise control and possession of that property. And in those circumstances, government will deem it that you have abandoned the property, even though you might be in court actively trying to regain possession of your property. Now that is an, a big problem. And, and I think, I think we, we, we could rest assured that I don't think any court in South Africa will allow that to happen necessarily, at least not now. Uh, but, but the fact that it is being included in the legislation is quite worrying about how government is approaching this from a an ideological perspective to say that we we will kick you off, uh, we'll take your property without paying you, even though by no fault of your own you have been evicted from it. So that is, I think, one of the biggest problems in this bill and uh, amongst a host of other problems. And I think the South African public would do very well to to rally against this bill. Well, thanks very much, Martin. It was great having you back on the channel. If you'd like to see our earlier video with Martin, where we discuss the importance of property rights, you can find that in our property rights and land playlist, which is linked to here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, do share it to your friends and colleagues, and join us next time on the Center for Risk Analysis channel.